John Patterson, your Attorney General. I'm a candidate for governor in the coming election, and I would like to talk with you briefly about the coming governor's race. John Patterson was the Attorney General. George Wallace was a circuit judge, and uh, they were both running against each other. Anyone running at that time had to be a strong segregationist, and Patterson seemed to be the strongest segregationist in the group that was running for governor at that time. Patterson was known for his signature carnation in his pocket whenever he made public appearances. As the Attorney General of the state, he had um, outlawed the NAACP. They've caused all the trouble between the races that we've had in Alabama. Now, we were successful about two years ago in putting the NAACP out of business and running them out of the state. It's the race agitators that cause us the trouble, and it's the race agitators that we've been after for several years since I've been in the Attorney General's office. At that time, there was nothing integrated in Alabama. If anybody running for governor had indicated in any manner that he was not for maintaining segregation, he had no chance of winning. He might as well just fold up and go on home and forget. We cannot afford to take a chance anymore. We've got to have someone in the governor's office who will stand up and fight for the rights of the people on this segregation question. John Patterson was an extreme segregationist. He beat George Wallace in 1958. He didn't want there to be any doubt uh, that he was committed to Jim Crow, he was committed to segregation, he would defend the Alabama way of life, and he was not going to put up with any Freedom Riders coming in and agitating in his state. We, we can't act as nursemaids to agitators. I, I think when they learn that, uh, that when they go somewhere to create a, to create a riot, uh, that uh, there's not going to be somebody there to stand between them and the other crowd, they'll stay home. Now, you just can't guarantee the safety of a fool, and that's what these folks are, just fools. If your intent is not to be a, a bona fide interstate passenger on a bus, why don't you just stay home and mind your own business and everything will be all right? <laughs> Bobby Kennedy, who was the Attorney General, uh, was apparently, from my point of view at that time, was orchestrating the thing from Washington. He kept demanding that they be given free passage, and, and he was obviously uh, uh, clearly on the side of the Freedom Riders. The situation is really dangerous. Uh, Bobby Kennedy convinces his brother uh, that maybe you need to talk to Patterson yourself. Maybe we, we have to assert presidential authority uh, to put the president on the line. So they call Patterson. Uh, they talk to his secretary. Patterson says, uh, tell him I've gone fishing. I'm not gonna talk to them. Um, and I think the Kennedy brothers were shocked um, that despite the assertion of presidential authority that, that their former political ally wouldn't even talk to them on the phone. And I think that, that really gave them a sense of how dangerous things were. When I refused to take the call of the president, that was a very, very bad moment for me. It's hard for me to explain it, you know. And if I had it all to do over again, uh, I'd, I'd take the call. I should have done what was really required to be done irrespective or irregardless of the attitudes of people in the legislature uh, as far as the racial matters were concerned. Yeah. I didn't get reelected anyway, so it wouldn't have hurt me none, you know, to have done what should have been done. It has haunted me ever since. 